The planets moving around the sun in their orbit exhibit uniform circular motions such as there is a constant change of direction. Children, welcome to today's lesson Uniform Circular Motion. Today, we shall find out all about the uniform circular motion. But first, let me share the learning objectives for today's lesson. On completion of this topic, learners will be able to define uniform circular motion, define centripetal acceleration, define centripetal force, discuss conditions under which uniform circular motion takes place. Students, you have heard the word motion. This motion may be either linear or circular. You have studied about both the motion linear as well as circular. In this lesson, you are going to learn special case of circular motion such as uniform circular motion. In the topic uniform circular motion, you will study about all the terms related with uniform circular motion and the condition under which this type of motion occurs. So, firstly, let's start the topic uniform circular motion. Another type of motion that appears quite often in everyday life is the motion of an object along a circular path. The path of the object does not have to be a complete circle even a car going around a curve of constant radius constitutes circular motion for the time the car is traveling the curve. Circular motion plays an important role in nature and technology. Newton was probably the first to describe a special case of circular motion that of uniform circular motion even though Christian Huygens was the first to publish the correct mathematical description of uniform circular motion. Kise object the circle which constant speed naal ho rahe motion nu uniform circular motion can de han. Jado koi object circle which move karda hai, ta us the direction constantly badal di rendi hai. Is tarah object circle de tangent wal gati kar raha hai. Vidyartiyon, to see uniform circular motion the definition samaj lai hai, is bare hor janan lai asi eh video dekh de haan. The needles of a stopwatch trace a circular path with constant speed during motion and hence have uniform circular motion. Consider a boy rotating a ball attached with the thread. Here the motion of the ball follows a circular path with constant speed. At every point of the path, the object is equidistant from the center of the motion. Also, the direction of the velocity of the ball is changing at every instant of motion and always tangent to the path of the motion, while acceleration of the ball is directed towards the center of the circle due to inward force called centripetal force. Students, now let's start to study the terms related with uniform circular motion such as centripetal acceleration and centripetal force. So, firstly, let's start the topic centripetal acceleration. Students, before starting the topic centripetal acceleration, we must know what are angular displacement and angular velocity for knowing about these two physical terms. Let us watch the visualization carefully. Consider a ball attached with a string which is in a boy's hand. As he starts rotating the ball, the motion of the ball follows a circular path with angular speed. Omega along a circular path whose radius is r and the center O. Suppose at any time t, the object is at the point A and at the time t plus delta t, 
it is at the point B. Let vector v and vector v plus delta v represent the velocity vectors of the object at the points A and B respectively. In circular motion, the direction of the velocity vector is always along the tangent to the circular path at that point. Since the object moves with a uniform speed, the velocity vectors vector v and vector v plus delta v have been represented along tangents to the circular path at the points A and B by the arrows of equal lengths. The change in velocity of the object occurs purely due to continuous change in the direction of the motion of the object. Let vector PL is equal to vector V and vector PM is equal to vector V plus delta V be drawn from a common point P, then the vector LM is equal to delta V represents the change in velocity of the object in small time delta t. As the time interval delta t is very small, the points L and M will be very close to each other and hence L M is equal to modulus of delta vector V can be treated as the arc of a circle whose radius is P L is equal to P M is equal to V, the uniform speed of the object. Since the angular displacement of the object moving in circular path is given by theta is equal to L by R which is equal to arc length by radius. Now here the angular displacement of the object moving in circular path is given by delta theta is equal to arc length by radius which is equal to modulus of delta vector v by v representing equation 1. On simplifying equation 1, we get modulus of delta vector v is equal to v into delta theta representing equation 2. Since delta theta is equal to omega delta t and v is equal to omega r representing equation 3. Substituting the value of delta theta and velocity v from equation 3 in equation 2, we get modulus of delta vector v is equal to omega r into omega delta t which is equal to omega square r into delta t representing equation 4. On simplifying equation 4, we get modulus of delta vector v by delta t is equal to omega square r which is equal to average acceleration a average representing equation 5. The given equation 5 gives the magnitude of the average acceleration of the object in the time interval delta t. Since the actual acceleration a of the object at time t is the limit of the average acceleration. Thus, actual acceleration of the object is a is equal to limit delta t tends to 0 modulus of delta vector v by delta t which is equal to limit delta t tends to 0 omega square r representing equation 6. As omega and r are independent of t, thus on simplifying equation 6, we get a is equal to omega square r representing equation 7. Since omega and radius r are constant value, therefore acceleration a is also constant value. Since the linear velocity is v is equal to r omega representing equation 8. Using the result of equation 8 in equation 7, we get acceleration a 
is equal to v square by r representing equation 9. The direction of the acceleration vector a at any time will be perpendicular to the velocity vector v of the object at that time. It is due to the reason that when delta t decreases, delta theta also decreases and likewise velocity vector delta v becomes more and more perpendicular to velocity vector v. In the limiting case, when delta t approaches 0, velocity vector delta vector v becomes perpendicular to the velocity vector v. Since the velocity vector at any point is tangent to the circular path at that point, the acceleration vector acts along the radius of the circle at that point and is directed towards center. It is called the centripetal acceleration. To know more about this concept, let's watch this video carefully. Consider a ball attached with a string which is in a boy's hand. As he starts rotating the ball, the motion of the ball follows a circular path with constant speed. The direction of the position vector changes continuously, but its magnitude always remains equal to the radius of the circular path. The direction of the velocity vector, which acts along tangent to the path, changes continuously, but its magnitude always remains constant. The direction of the acceleration vector, which acts along the radius of the circular path and towards the centre, changes continuously, but its magnitude always remains constant. Students, after knowing about the uniform circular motion, and its basic terms such as angular displacement, angular velocity and centripetal acceleration. Before going further, let's solve some problem related with these terms. A stone tied to the end of string 90 cm long is whirled in a horizontal circle with a constant speed. If the stone makes 20 revolutions in 25 seconds, what is the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of the stone and the solution is here length of the string is L is equal to 90 centimeter as the stone whirled 20 revolutions in 25 seconds thus the time period of the revolution is T is equal to 25 by 20 seconds as the stone tied with the string used for whirling the stone therefore the length of the string is equal to the radius of the circular path traced by the stone during motion. Therefore, radius of the circular path traced by the whirling stone is r is equal to 90 centimeter. As the angular velocity of the stone is omega is equal to 2 pi by t representing equation 1. Since time period of rotation is t is equal to 25 by 20 seconds representing equation 2. On substituting the value of t in equation 1, we get omega is equal to 2 pi into 20 whole divided by 25 radian per seconds. On simplification, we get omega is equal to 8 pi by 5 radian per seconds. The acceleration of uniform circular motion is given by A is equal to omega square r representing equation 3. On substituting the value of omega and r in equation 3, we get A is equal to 8 pi by 5 whole square into 90 which is equal to 64 into 3.14 whole square into 90 by 25. On simplification, we get A is equal to 64 into 9.8 into 18 by 5 which is equal to 2257.92 centimeter 
per second square. The acceleration is directed along the radius of the circular path and towards the center of the circle. Vidyarthiyo, ki tu si jandde ho ke je kise body da har particle circle which move kare ate har circle da center same straight line ho ve ta body rotational motion which ho ve gi. Is tara straight line rotation di axis ho ve gi. O motion jis which straight line te gati kar di body apni direction change nahi kar di ate body space which ik पोजीशन तो दूसरी पोजीशन ते पहुंच दी है इस नो ट्रांसलेशनल मोशन कहने हैं ट्रांसलेशनल मोशन स्ट्रेट लाइन या कर्वी लिनियर हो सकता है ए मोशन दे पाथ ते डिपेंड करता है कई गतियां अजीहियां हैं जो रोटेटरी अते ट्रांसलेशनल मोशन दा कॉम्बिनेशन हैं इन अनु सर्कुलर मोशन कहने हैं होना इस लिए असी हुन condition for uniform circular motion बारे पढ़ दे हां. The uniform circular motion represents the basic form of rotational motion in the same manner as uniform linear motion represents the basic form of translational motion. They, however, are different with respect to the requirement of force to maintain motion. Uniform linear motion is the reflection of the inherent natural tendency of all natural bodies. According to Newton's first law of motion, an object keeps moving with its velocity unless there is no external force. Thus, uniform linear motion indicates absence of force. Dujje paase, uniform circular motion which velocity the direction continuously badal di hai, jad ki is the magnitude which कोई चेंज नहीं हुंदा। Velocity दी direction which change नाल velocity v which बदलाव हुंदा है। दुजे शब्दा which uniform circular motion acceleration नाल संबंधित है अते इस लई ए force नाल भी संबंधित है। इस लई uniform circular motion force दी presence नू इंडिकेट कर दी है। हुन असी uniform circular motion नू maintain रखन वाली force बारे जान दे हां। a visual tyan nal vekho. We know that force acting in the direction of motion changes only the magnitude of velocity. A change in the direction of motion, therefore, requires that velocity of the particle and force acting on it should be at an angle. However, such a force at an angle with the direction of motion would have a component along the direction of velocity as well, and that would change the magnitude of the motion. In order that there is no change in the magnitude of velocity, the force should have zero components along the direction of velocity. In other words, F cos 90 degree is equal to zero. This is possible only if the force be perpendicular to the direction of velocity such that its component in the direction of velocity is zero. In particular, this is the requirement for a motion to be uniform circular motion. Briefly, we can say that uniform circular motion needs a force which is always perpendicular to the direction of velocity. Since the direction of velocity is continuously changing, the direction of force being perpendicular to velocity should also change continuously. The direction of velocity along the circular trajectory is tangential. The perpendicular direction to the circular trajectory is therefore radial direction. It implies that force and hence acceleration in uniform direction motion is radial. For this reason, acceleration in uniform circular motion is recognized as centripetal acceleration. Students, you have learnt that which force is necessary for performing uniform circular motion? This force is centripetal force. To know more about this force, let's start the topic centripetal force. To see jaan de ho ki uniform circular motion lai centripetal force chai di hai. Jado rigid body 
ਸਰਕੂਲਰ ਪਾਥ ਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਯੂਨੀਫਾਰਮ ਸਪੀਡ ਨਾਲ ਚੱਲਦੀ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਇਸ ਦੀ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਕੰਟੀਨਿਊਸਲੀ ਚੇਂਜ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਇਨਰਸ਼ੀਆ ਦੇ ਕਾਰਨ ਸਰਕੂਲਰ ਪਾਥ ਦੇ ਹਰ ਬਿੰਦੂ ਤੇ ਬਾਡੀ ਸਰਕੂਲਰ ਪਾਥ ਦੇ ਟੈਂਜੈਂਟ ਚੱਲਦੀ ਹੈ ਨਿਊਟਨਸ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਲਾਅ ਆਫ ਮੋਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਅਨੁਸਾਰ ਬਾਡੀ ਦੀ ਮੋਸ਼ਨ ਦੀ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਚੇਂਜ ਤਾਂ ਹੀ ਸੰਭਵ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਜੇ ਬਾਡੀ ਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਐਕਸਟਰਨਲ ਫੋਰਸ ਕਿਰਿਆ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਬਾਡੀ ਦੀ ਸਰਕੂਲਰ ਪਾਥ ਤੇ ਮੋਸ਼ਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਐਕਸਟਰਨਲ ਫੋਰਸ ਦੀ ਲੋੜ ਹੈ ਜੋ ਬਾਡੀ ਨੂੰ ਪਥ ਦੇ ਹਰ ਬਿੰਦੂ ਤੇ ਸਟ੍ਰੇਟ ਪਾਥ ਤੋਂ ਸਰਕੂਲਰ ਪਾਥ ਤੇ ਡਿਫਲੈਕਟ ਕਰ ਦਿੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਐਨ ਐਕਸਟਰਨਲ ਫੋਰਸ ਰਿਕੁਆਇਰਡ ਟੂ ਮੇਕ ਅ ਬਾਡੀ ਮੂਵ ਅਲੋਂਗ ਸਰਕੂਲਰ ਪਾਥ ਵਿਦ ਯੂਨੀਫਾਰਮ ਸਪੀਡ ਇਸ ਕਾਲਡ ਸੈਂਟਰੀਪੀਟਲ ਫੋਰਸ ਇਟ ਫੋਲੋਸ ਦੈਟ ਅ ਬਾਡੀ ਇਨ ਯੂਨੀਫਾਰਮ ਸਰਕੂਲਰ ਮੋਸ਼ਨ is in a continuous accelerated motion and the acceleration is directed along the radius of the circular path and towards the center it is called the centripetal acceleration if r is the radius of the circular path along which the object is moving and v is the uniform speed of the object then the acceleration of the object is a is equal to v square by r representing equation 1 therefore centripetal force required to move a body of mass m with uniform speed v along a circular path is f is equal to m v square by r representing equation 2 since the linear velocity of the object moving in circular path is v is equal to r omega representing equation 3 using the result of equation 3 in equation 2 we get f is equal to m omega square r square by r which is equal to m omega square r representing equation 4 as the angular velocity of the object is omega is equal to 2 pi by t which is equal to 2 pi nu where nu is the frequency of the revolution of the object representing equation 5 on substituting the value of omega from equation 5 in equation 4 we get f is equal to 4 pi square nu square m r representing equation 6 students you have learned much about uniform circular motion with the help of examples let us now summarize what we have learned so far Uniform circular motion is the motion of an object in a circle at a constant speed. In uniform circular motion, the direction of velocity vector is always changing and tangent to the circular path. In uniform circular motion, centripetal acceleration of the object is always directed towards the center of the circular path. In uniform circular motion, the direction of velocity vector is always changing and tangent to the circular path in uniform circular motion the magnitude of velocity vector and centripetal acceleration is always remain constant the centripetal acceleration of the object having uniform circular motion is a is equal to v square by r which is equal to omega square r the centripetal force required to move a body of mass m with uniform speed v along a circular path is f is equal to m v square by r so the more we know about the uniform circular motion better equipped are we to make them work for us so now we come to the end of today's topic here we are going to solve some problems question a wheel is 50 cm in radius is moving with a speed of 20 m per second find the angular speed here radius of the wheel is r is equal to 50 cm which is equal to 0.5 m and linear speed of the wheel is 20 m per second since linear speed of the object moving with angular speed omega in circular path of radius r is v is equal to r omega thus the angular speed of the object is 
omega is equal to v by r representing equation 1. Now, substituting the value of v and r in equation 1, we get omega is equal to 20 by 0 0.5. On simplification, we get angular speed of the wheel is omega is equal to 40 radian per second. Question, a stone tied to the end of string 70 centimeter long is whirled in a horizontal circle with a constant speed. If the stone makes 35 revolutions in 44 seconds, what is the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of the stone? Here, length of the string is L is equal to 70 centimeter. As the stone whirled 35 revolutions in 44 seconds, thus the time period of the revolution is T is equal to 44 by 35 seconds. As the stone tied with the string used for whirling the stone, therefore the length of the string is equal to the radius of the circular path traced by the stone during motion. Therefore, radius of the circular path traced by the whirling stone is r is equal to 70 centimeter. As the angular velocity of the stone is omega is equal to 2 pi by t representing equation 1. On substituting the value of t in equation 1, we get omega is equal to 2 into 22 by 7 into 44 by 35 radian per seconds. On simplification, we get omega is equal to 5 radian per second. The acceleration of object having uniform circular motion is given by A is equal to omega square r representing equation 2. On substituting the value of omega and r in equation 2, we get A is equal to 5 square into 70 which is equal to 25 into 70. On simplification, we get A is equal to 1750 centimeter per second square. The acceleration is directed along the radius of the circular path and towards the center of the circle. Question, an artificial satellite of mass 400 kilogram is orbiting around the earth with a speed of 8 kilometer per second at a distance of 8000 kilometer from the earth. Calculate the centripetal acceleration and centripetal force. Here, the linear speed of the orbiting artificial satellite is V is equal to 8 kilometer per second and its distance from the earth surface is D is equal to 8000 kilometer. Here, the artificial satellite is orbiting in circular path of radius r is equal to 8000 kilometer which is equal to 8 into 10 raised to the power 6 meter. The linear speed of the orbiting artificial satellite is v is equal to 8 kilometer per second which is equal to 8000 meter per second. Since the centripetal acceleration of the satellite is A is equal to V square by R representing equation 1. On substituting the value of V and R in equation 1, we get acceleration A is equal to 8000 whole square by 8 into 10 raised to the power 6 which is equal to 64 into 10 raised to the power 6 by 8 into 10 raised to the power 6. On simplification, we get acceleration A is equal to 8 meter per second square. Hence, centripetal acceleration of the orbiting satellite is 8 meter per second square. If m is the mass of the object moving with the linear speed v in a circular path of radius r, then the centripetal force required for uniform circular motion is 
f is equal to m v square by r which is equal to m a representing equation 2. Here a is the centripetal acceleration of the object. Now substituting m is equal to 400 kilogram and a is equal to 8 meter per second square in equation 2 we get f is equal to 400 into 8. On simplification we get f is equal to 3200 Newton. Hence the centripetal force required for uniform circular motion is 3200 Newton. I am confident that you have all scored well. I hope you enjoyed the lesson as much as I did and are looking forward to the next class. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.